my name is F1, but I'm mostly, I am a professional banker of over 16 years experience. I've handled clients in various um, industries, medical and uh, sectors in Nigeria, including manufacturing, logistics, automobile, and rest. And when I started off my career, I would say that I, I had more of um, paid knowledge around trade import because of the type of clients that I handled. But I want to say that the defining moment in my career was when I um, underwent pretty impacts um, trade academy training. The first one was in my spending last year's space. So fast forward in 2020 when the COVID came, again, that thought came to me. And this time I said, no, I'll take um, the move by the home. I'm not going to wait for my company to train me. So I um, heard about, I, I reached out to pretty Impacts. And you know, they're always, they're always throwing things at your place, supporting you, not necessarily for you to come and spend your money, but just educators. So I ran through the different courses that they had, and I just knew that I had to, you know, go for this one. This is the executive diploma in export business management. And I can tell you, as of 2021, we are at the lockdown, I wonder when this three months training, I can tell you, this has been a game changer for me in my career. I didn't know that non oil that's what to become in focus the way it was, but all I wanted to do was to provide and um, to be able to provide advice to help my clients understand exports. You know, I know the trade is um, the processing side from the bank's perspective, but I didn't really understand the export environment and how it affects clients. What what do the what does an exporter, what are the pain points? So this um, um, this course helps me, you know, to have good understanding of the export environment in Nigeria, what to be looking for, what are the needs. It's an all-encompassing program. And at that point, when I finished this program, it opened a huge opportunity for me in my workplace. And I can tell you that I was able to make a high impact and providing solutions for exports and um, allowed which allowed my company to grow in leaps and bounds in terms of non-oil exports in Nigeria. We are still learning and I believe that there are more courses for me to take from 3T Impact and I can recommend this program to anyone and everyone. Even if you are not a banker, you're just a regular trade person. There are other, other opportunities coming up in, for trade within Africa outside Africa, especially with the geopolitical tension, I think we have to equip ourselves with the right knowledge, right skills that will be able to, you know, take advantage of the opportunity that not just for Nigeria, but for Africa. Thank you very much. Three syntax, you're the best. Thank you. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pivot to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted templates for building a successful and sustainable export business. To so pre order a 50% discount, call 080 912 Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you on the verge of losing your job for no performance? Do you desire a change for the better in your career? Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professionals from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. A 
are you are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn dollars, euros, or pounds? It's all that it takes for your business to the world. Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making the product a service to go global in a successful and sustainable way? To make more bodies, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To order, call 080 sustain our existing exports, but we are going to attract, not even attract too more from the prospective exporters. We have an opportunity for us to even create uh, exporters within our own community, just like what I was telling you, what is happening in my own community. You need to see the kind of uh, passion and interest shown from my community in terms of uh, export. Everybody now went to that side. And then, uh, as I said, part of our own advising is that you see, we are only, as I said from the beginning, uh, most of our businesses are highly saturated locally, but are in high demand internationally. But what we need to do, or the lack of basic knowledge in export, limits our potentials to go or to go beyond our limit or to our full capacity as uh, exporters. So with this uh, brand new name, I must register to my acquisition. Uh, it's the time well spent that three months. I uh, hope oh, uh, I was able to get that it with Excel for another two months so that we can learn more. Uh, everything about the program is so fantastic. Uh, it's so appreciated and the impact, not only to me as a city, it came to my community, my community has felt the impact of this show. My brand also is in fact is gaining higher from this uh, trading app because I know the number of customers that are highly impressed that always look forward to. Even this morning, I received nothing less than three calls from exporters on so, so many issues or challenges that they have that we are able to address them. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining tonight. We are traveling to any good state today. Uh, one of the civil servant state, like we often call it in the Southeast. If you're here to get the book B to go global, it's still available for those that are interested. Basically, I lighten the reason why export businesses fail in Nigeria. If you also want to have access to the previous edition of this program, visit our YouTube channel, Voice of African Trade. Subscribe, like, share, and also drop your comment. If you want to also have access to the link to this program every week, every week for those that want to have access to the link to this program, you can visit uh telegram and telegram you are look for african export business platform if you search for that african export business platform you will get to see the link for that week typically only posted few hours to the program on Thursdays, typically post a few hours to the program on Thursdays. So we start from Abia State, then to Adamawa State, then to Akwaibon, then to Anambra, then to Bauchi. We've been to Bayelsa and Benue, we've been to Bonu and Cross River. 
We've been to Delta Eboin. Two weeks ago, we were in Edo State and last week in Ekitian. Today, in Enugu State, right there in the southeast. And the topic, as usual, is exploring export potential of Enugu State under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Before we start, we go on a short break. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn dollars, euros, or pounds? Are you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making a product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre order a 33% discount, call 080-912-44449. All right. Every week we go through seven sections in this program. We have the preamble, basically explain the reason why any good state has to export. Then the peculiarities. What are the peculiar peculiarities of any good state? What's the debt profile of the state and income level plus the level of unemployment? Then the potential, basically looking at what are the products that any good state can produce and export, either agric or solid minerals or even manufactured goods. Then the purchaser, who are the buyer of this product? And what is the market size? Who are the buyer and what is the market size? And then proposals. What is our proposal on how the state can grow its economy? You know, one of the conversations I want to hear from presidential candidate and governor of Japan candidate. In this um, 2023 election is how do they, how do they want to generate revenue for their state? How do they to grow, grow the economy of the state? So the proposal is talking about how they can grow the economy. And the uh, profit is talking about how they themselves can make money as state government from export. And you know, out of all the people contesting, I've only heard one of them talk about this. Talk about this particular, the fact that a state should not be waiting for the federal government to give them money. They should be producing themselves. And that's the essence of this program every week, to give, make a sense out of that, making us to see, okay, how do you produce yourself? How do you produce yourself? How do you generate income directly yourself? I mean, as a state. I mean, as a state. So let's start. Any good state can avoid overdependent of federal allocation simply by going into export. The state also can boost its GDP by going into export. The state can create employment for SME through exportation. Export has what it takes to decrease dependence 
on domestic market through export. The state can earn export proceeds and grow its revenue. Through export, the state can make farming and rural life become more lucrative. And through export, the state can gain global market share and recognition. Why does any good state have to export? Any good state have to export because export can make the state home of creativity and innovation. Export can industrialize the state, can be a sort of job creation for youth, helping the youth to know, the state to know the value of their competitive advantage. It can help the state to leave for others to follow. Any good state can also become independent. Export can make the state become independent of federal allocation and help the state to have Numerous incentives from the federal government, that's the business in the state, effort create opportunity to maximize the indigenous of any good state abroad. It's a source of poverty and education in the state. It can help the state to keep quick the league of state depending on wasting assets like oil. It can help the state to revive the economy. It can help the state to slow down rural and urban migration, to create task free opportunity five products in the state, utilization of idle capacity of companies. The state can become viable. We are going to check the viability of any good state. You know, every time we check the income level. I don't know why this is not a discussion we are having. You know, politicians will come and just stay on the podium and be making empty promises. Empty pro People are not engaging them. You want to build school, you will build road. How? When we get money from Abuja, yeah, there's no money in Abuja again now. How much are you getting from Abuja? Oh, ideal. How many people are working in the state? How do you intend to generate the money? Give us tangible details that we can query, question, and help you refine on how you want to generate income. Nobody's having that conversation. So we are putting all this out there for people from any good state and other part of the country to be able to ask the right question. The state can really not be a state that is not viable. Wealth creation for citizens of the state, help the state to extract potential of products found in the state, and yearn for more improvement goal of competition and zero in on their area of strength. So what do you see in any good state today? Some people see unemployment, and are not disputing the fact that there are unemployment in any good state. Some people see poverty, and I'm not disputing the fact that there is poverty in any good state. These are facts about what is happening in this state. Some people see frustration. These are facts. But you can also choose to see opportunities in farming in any good state, opportunities in mining in any good state, and opportunities in the population of any good state. Opportunities in the population of any good state. We'll go on the short break when we come back. We are going to now discuss the peculiarity of any good state. My name is Victor and I just um, finished the global certified global trade professionals training. Very rewarding. Um, working well with the commercial bank in Nigeria. Frankly, I, I had struggled with trade transactions, but there was no running away from it. The focus right now in our bank is exports. Two weeks ago, um, just two weeks to the end of the program, I got a call from an exporter in Obobo shop that wants to do um, cassava chips, export cassava chips to Europe. Um, if I hadn't taken this program, it would have been very difficult for me to onboard that customer and have a decent conversation with him um, about the transaction. The cost prepared me in dealing with that customer's request, which is still ongoing. It's just the first step for me. I intend to take additional courses in trade, um, also with the African continental free trade area, 
this is an area where I've decided that I would like to specialize in. So yes, this is the foundation for me. I've just been very helpful. Thank you. All right. What are the peculiarities of this state? Enugu State was created in 1991 from Anambra State by the Babangida regime. The capital is in Enugu, and this is derived from the word Enugu, which means top of the hill. Top of the hill. Situated in the inland southeastern state, covers 7,161 square kilometers, bounded in the way by uh, Anambra State, in the south by Kogi State, um, Kogi in the north, sorry, Wai, Benue, and Ebony in the east, Imbo in the south. Enugu and Usuka are the major town in this state. Its physical features change gradually from tropical rainforest to open woodland and then savanna, apart from a chain of low hill running through the Abakaliki Enugu uh, Ebony State in the east, which is east to Usuka in the northwest and southward through Enugu and Agu. The west of the state is made up of low land separated by numerous streams and rivers, and uh, major ones of which is Ada River and Oji River. Opportunity for investment exists in agri, healthcare, tourism, land manufacturing, energy, and of course, mining. The state has a land mass of 7,530 square kilometers, 17 local government, population of about 4.6 or 7 million people, Tropical savanna is vegetation. Major crop melon, yam, oil palm, taro, maize, rice, sesame, cassava. Minerals include coal, iron ore, lead, and zinc ore. The only international airport in Southeast is in this state. Presence of more, I think it's the new one, Anambra now. Presence of multiple free trade zone. Large application of technology, innovation, and startup hub. Six over sixteen uh, university and institution. Abundant coal, iron, limestone. The IGR of this state is thirty one point one billion. The budget is one sixty nine billion as at twenty twenty. Basically saying this state cannot survive without the allocation coming from Abuja. Unemployment is very high, 31.362%. Underemployment, 21.29%. Total unemployed, 541,000 uh, people. Labor force is 1.7 out of which only 806 work for more than 40 hours. Now, we go on a short break. When we come back, we now go deeper into the profile of this state. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Build to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business to pre order a 33% discount call 080 912 
profile, the IGR of this state went up 31 billion in 2019. By 2020, because of COVID, it went to 23.65 billion. Federal allocation is 53.4. Now, look at this. Debt of this state, 124 billion, I mean, 68 billion Naira and 124 million, 124 million, over 150 million, I mean, billion Naira in total debt, depending on the extent you are looking at. So look at this state again. Look at the way the debt had grown, 150 million, rather, 150 million. So a number of states in Nigeria keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, even though the state has what it takes. But of course, since most of the states really are not interested in generating revenue or growing the economy, everybody's interested in taking their own share of the national cake. Imagine that this state, in its budget, is over 100 billion. Total receive, receipt of this state is not even up to 100 billion. 25, 23.5 IGR, 53.4 um, federal allocation. So about 70% of the income is from Abuja and about 30 is Italian generated revenue. The state is doing well in capital expenditure about 41%, which I think make a lot of sense because for some state is even up less than 15, 20%. They are just busy paying salaries and sharing the money with not so much infrastructure right there on ground in this state. Let's see what um, budget have to say about this state. According to budget report of the of Nigerian state, given the fiscal turmoil created by the pandemic uh, in 2020, any good local economy and by extension its government revenue will not spare. The state ran 14 in fiscal performance index, down five places from nine position in 2020. Enugu was not able to meet its spending obligation of 112 billion without resulting into borrowing. As of December 34, the state debt stock was 105 billion naira. 115 rather, 115 billion naira. Making the 20th most indebted state. <laughs> most indebted state in the country, 20th. Year on year, the state domestic debt saw 11.57% growth from 61 billion recorded in 2019 to 68. And said we said do something about its current revenue predicament for that borrowing may be inevitable. Unfortunately, its borrowing options are narrowing down and it has breached a critical debt ceiling of investment and security act, which will still further borrowing from capital market for any state. Once its debt is more than 50% of its previous year revenue. Can you imagine that? It's borrowing more than 50% of its previous year revenue. That means the revenue is so small. In 2020, revenue generation became even more strenuous for any good state as it experienced a 23.88 down in its IGR. This decrease was driven largely by 39, a 39.53 decline in income taxes. From 11, 18.1 to 10.95. The state recurring revenue structure still indicate that the state has a high dependency on federally collected revenue, which accounted for 69.03% of its revenue. The state 2020 total expenditure of 112 billion comprised 64.39 operating expenses and 3.2 low repayment and 
capital expenditure of 45.18. Clearly, any good spending priority are gradually tilting towards investing in capital infrastructure, like I said, which is which makes a lot of sense compared to its operating expenses, because it's a decent capital spending for only 40% of the total state expenditure. Compelling the compelling improvement in capital expenditure is visible in economic affairs which move up by 139.88% from 10 to 25.86 billion. Even though the state has significantly improved in its earnings, but sincerely, this state is under serious duress. This state might really not be able to survive going forward. And this is a very common and recurring decimal among Nigerian state, common and recurring decimal among Nigerian state. Why? Because the governors do not go in to generate income. If you have friends from any good state, this would be a good one to share with their citizens. To be able to ask the governor coming in, how do you intend to generate income for your state? We go on a short break when we come back, we discuss the potential that is resident in any good state. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you on the verge of losing your job for no performance? You desire a change for the better in your career. Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professionals from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right. So, what are the potential for export that is resident in Enugu State? What are the potential for income generation that is resident in Enugu State? What are the opportunities that the state have that the governor is not looking at? Let's explore. Any good state is noted for its coal deposit. From coal alone, this state has a lot it can earn. Its main economy depends on coal before the discovery of oil in commercial quantity. That is the main reason why Enugu is nicknamed the coal city, actually. The state is predominantly agricultural which yam tuba, palm oil, or palm produce and rice being a main produce of the state. Besides coal, new mineral deposits are presented being discovered in Enugu, like limestone, iron ore, crude oil, natural gas, and bauxite. A network of roads connect important center of trade and industry in the state. A rail line of Eastern District of Nigeria Railway run through the state capital, Enugu to Bodakot, in rivers, and Enugu to Makodi, then northward. Enugu has many industries that satisfy both local and international needs, like Enugu Vegetable Oil Product Limited, uh, Nigeria Company Limited, Niger Gas, rather, Niger Gas uh, Company Limited, Aluminum Product Limited, Enugu Building Material Industries, M9 Limited, Anambra Motor Manufacturing Company, Prima Cashew Industry, Niger Steel, Sunrise Flower Mill, Ama Beauty, and a host of others. 
Our culture playing a important role in this state. Like I said earlier, yam, palm oil, taro, rice, cassava, our main crop. The social is a center for mining. Industry in the state include textile, manufacturing, food processing, lumbering, soft drink, bottling, beauty, furniture manufacturing, and the like. So what is the potential of all these for this state? Who are the buyers? And what quantity do they buy for this product? Who are the buyers? And what quantity do they buy for this product? Palm oil, $29.3 billion is the possibility in that market. Even Africa alone is about 4.28. And who are the buyers? India, China, Pakistan, Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Russia, Germany are the major buyers of this product. United States, Kenya, Egypt, Mexico, Canada. But in Africa, you have the like of Egypt, the market is 4.28. The like of Egypt, Tanzania, Angola, Togo, Kenya, South Africa, Benin Republic, Senegal, Ghana, major importer of palm oil. You then imagine what market palm oil are. Even in Africa, because of industry, using them as raw materials. Then rice, 24.7 billion dollars. Africa alone is doing 25% of that, about 6 billion. Iraq, China, Iraq, Saudi, Philippines, UAE, Yemen, Japan, Benin Republic, Côte d'Ivoire, South Korea, Senegal, Ghana, Kenya, France, Germany, United States. But in Africa, I've always claimed that Benin doesn't have the population to sustain this huge demand for rice. A good chunk of that rice escaped into Nigeria. Another neighboring countries. Côte d'Ivoire, South Africa, Kenya, Senegal, Cameroon, Egypt, Togo, Angola, Guinea, Somalia, Madagascar, Mozambique, Liberia, Burkina Faso, Libya, Tanzania, Niger, all this. All this are the market available for rice in Africa. How about corn? 36.3 billion dollars. Who are the buyers? Japan, Spain, Vietnam, Germany. Egypt, Mexico, Peru, Spain. These are the major markets for corn. And in Africa alone, you have $3.73 billion from Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, South Africa, Kenya, Senegal, and the like. This state produces coal 
Look at the market for coal for crying out loud. $94 billion. $94 billion. $94 billion. This state produce coal. This state is owing about one and a, over 100 billion naira. The state being stopped from borrowing further by SEC because it's already reaching its ceiling. What is borrowing? What is making? It's not even up to 50%. It's not even up to 50%. And this is very important because this state has what it takes. But set restricted further borrowing from capital market from the state because his debt is more than 50% of his previous year revenue. The total debt is more than 50% of the previous year revenue. When you look at the total revenue, the state cannot even borrow again. We need governors who will maximize the potential of the state rather than, you know, the idea of sitting down, not doing anything, and being able to pay salary at the end of the month because someone else is giving you what to money, sharing the money, is one of the biggest challenges I think we have as a nation that is killing production, actually. Killing production. No incentive to produce. Why would you even think of producing now? I mean, okay, why would you even think of producing when you can pay salary without, if a government in Nigeria decides to sleep and do nothing from beginning of the month to the end of the month, if we still be able to pay salary and they will help you. You know, a lot of a lot of project is being commissioned in River State. We're going to get to River State soon. I want to see how much revenue River State is generating. I'm sure because they have a lot of uh, a lot of um, oil company in that state, oil and gas company in that state, that probably is contributing. And that should be a lesson because River State is already at an advantage because it's an oil city. But they're, they're able to make a lot of money because there's a lot of productivity. Not because the governor did it all. <laughs> he inherited it. I'm looking for governors that will be able to create something like that and let the state make a lot of money, which is what we talk about every week, but adapting this model for different states in Nigeria of what is possible. Imagine coal having such a huge market from China to Japan to South Korea to Italy, I mean, to um, India, Europe, very low because they are no more, they are changing alternative energy. But many of them are going by the fossil fuel now because of the actions of this our man. This is our man in Russia, weaponizing energy. Africa is even importing up to a billion of coal from Morocco to Egypt, to South Africa, to Senegal, to Djibouti, to Togo, to Mauritius, to Madagascar. Imagine the market for coal, even in Africa. Even in Africa. What of melon? Melon? 3.74 billion dollars. Germany, Spain, Italy, United States, Canada, China, Hong Kong, France, Netherlands. In Africa, a very small demand, 16 million dollars. South Africa, Libya, Botswana, Cote d'Ivoire, Cuba, Namibia, Seychelles, Rwanda, Namibia, Mauritius, and Seychelles. We'll go on a short break when we come back. We'll now begin to discuss the profit. And 
a proposal to the state government of Enugu State. My name is Victor and I just um, finished the global, certified global trade professionals training. Very rewarding. Um, I work in one of the commercial banks in Nigeria. Frankly, I, I had struggled with trade transactions, but there was no running away from it. The focus right now in our bank is exports. Two weeks ago, um, just two weeks to the end of the program, I got a call from an exporter in Obobo shop that wants to do um, cassava chips, export cassava chips to Europe. Um, if I hadn't taken this program, it would have been very difficult for me to onboard that customer and have a decent conversation with him um, about the transaction. The cost prepared me in dealing with that customer's request, which is still ongoing. It's just the first step for me. I intend to take additional courses in trade, um, also with the African continental free trade area. This is an area where I've decided that I would like to specialize in. So yes, this is the foundation for me, but it's been very helpful. Thank you. So the proposal, the proposal, what are we proposing to the governor or government of Enugu State? That the government of Enugu State should engage the energy of the SME to contribute to the growth of the state? How would that happen? Number one, decide on the product that it wants to promote and ensure the value chain of that product is explored with the SME from beginning to the end. It must be a product in the state, maybe palm oil, for example. It must be a product produced in the state, raw materials, and with capacity to process value addition. But what I discover is that when you have a value chain from production to harvesting and transport, to primary processing, to secondary processing, Coming from transport processing and packaging, marketing and sales, logistics and export and distribution. When an NSME or only SME are involved in the chain, you have inefficient value chain operator, low processing and capacity, and low output, few job creation low quality and packaging, high cost of production, non-competitive product in the export market. Non-competitive product in the export market. But look at what we are proposing for the government to do. Government can partner with an, a multinational, sorry, a large corporate, Set up with government having larger share, not set up for profit, but for development, for growth and development. It will charge for its services, but not a huge cost. That company can decide to be producing palm oil in any palm oil. So SME1 is the one that cultivates, produces the palm oil, harvest it. Transport it to deliver to SME2 who buy from SME1. SME2 deliver it to the large corporate. And this large corporate will process, primary processing, secondary processing, and package it. By the time SME2 come back, after buying raw material and delivery, and he has agreed on the design of his packaging, is coming to pick up finished goods. It's coming to pick up finished goods. The only headache of SME2 now is logistics, 
marketing sales, logistic and export. Through this, we can create efficient valuation operator, high processing capacity and high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production and competitive products in the export market, increase job creation, decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. There is a governor in the South-South who was accused recently of not paying salary and giving out some money to a particular church. The governor builds massive factories looking for people to come and take it over. Nobody is coming to take it over. How will you build factory and wait for people to come and take it over? Shouldn't you have someone that will take it over before you even start building in the first place? But for me, I right from when he started that project, I had issue with the model, even though it's a good initiative. But the model of operation, I had a big issue with it. I feel this will be better. This will create a lot of job and opportunity, decrease inequality, decrease insecurity in, insecurity in the state. In order to support exporters in that state, to be able to enter market in Africa, Europe, and America in a secure and sustainable way, the state can partner with representatives at destination, set up warehouse at destination, Set up entity at destination, partner with independent agent and its own destination, organize and sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. Before we close today, how can the state directly profit from export? And I will use a model of palm oil. How can the state directly profit from export? How? Can the state directly profit from export? Look at the chart on the screen. This is a model we have worked on. This can be any other product. Not necessarily the one I put there now. This is just to give an idea of what is possible. This is just to give an idea of what is possible. If the state used 50% of the land to cultivate palm oil, to palm canne rather, if the state does that, it can generate, based on 18 metric tons yield per hectare, it can generate 12, 2.4 million metric tons. If that is processed at 15, 19% yield, it can generate 590,000 metric tons of palm oil. If we use the cost price, the selling price of palm oil per metric ton, multiply by the... Um, Exchange rate of 415, the state can make $317 billion naira. When you add all the other costs of production, of farming, of processing, of export together, and you deduct it, you can see about the 295 billion plus the IGR of 23, the state can have 319 billion. Remember, the budget of the state is 187 as of 2022. The state that cannot raise up to 100 billion in income is making a budget of 187. Sometimes our governors, I just don't understand, just have such a huge uh, budget of what they want to do, but there is no huge plan of how to generate income to be able to satisfy that budget. How can this happen in any good state? The state can partner with Okomu Oil, for example, or any other company that have the capacity to produce, engage the farmers in the state, fund them, give them processing, um, um, training, and impute to go and farm, farm produce, plenty, but give them a guarantee to buy from them. Fund them to cooperative, issue a purchase order with a bank guarantee to buy. The SPV they set up with private organizations provide training and input and support. The SPV provide collection centers, for harvest of the farm produce, 
The product is clean and processed. The product is exported to the buyer, documentation and shipment done. Document are presented and payment is made. When payment comes, the state government can pay the farmers and the people in the state that contributed those raw materials. Pay also the share of profit of his partner. Operating expenses and have something reasonable to be pursuing developmental projects in the state. I am saying state government can develop their state from profit made from a product like palm oil. The impact of a suggested model for state government goes beyond the generation of revenue by export. It has a humongous impact on employment generation and increased economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective and efficient and enduring model for diversifying the economy of the state. This model can also be replicated by the federal government at the federal level, especially for exportation of solid minerals. Next week, we are going to be discussing Gombe State. My name is Victor and I, I just um, finished the global, certified global trade professionals training. Very rewarding. Um, I work in one of the commercial banks in Nigeria. Frankly, I, I had struggled with trade transactions, but there was no running away from it. The focus right now in our bank is exports. Two weeks ago, uh, just two weeks to the end of the program, I got a call from an exporter in Obobo shop that wants to do um, cassava chips, export cassava chips to Europe. Um, if I hadn't taken this program, it would have been very difficult for me to onboard that customer and have a decent conversation with him um, about the transaction. The cost prepared me in dealing with that customer's request, which is still ongoing. It's just the first step for me. I intend to take additional courses in trade, um, also with the African continental free trade area. So it's an area where I've decided that I would like to specialize in. So yes, this is the foundation for me. I've just been very helpful. Thank you. If you are here to get a book built to go global, this is a book that shows you basically why export businesses fail. Grab your copy, it can be delivered to you anywhere you are in the country or even outside the country. You can also get a repeat of this video right on our YouTube channel, Voice of African Trade. Like, share, drop your comment, and click on notification bell. If you want to get a link to this program before I mean, um, before the program starts, they, they join us every week. Join our Telegram, Expo, African Export Business Platform on Telegram. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pivot to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre order a 50% discount, call 080-912-44449. So, uh, to the bank or to us in bank, we have seen a way where we cannot only uh, return and sustain our existing export but we are going to attract, not even attract to more from the prospective exporters. We have an opportunity for us to 
even create uh, exporters within our own community, just like what I was telling you, what is happening in my own community. You need to see the kind of uh, passion and interest shown from my community in terms of uh, export. Everybody now went to that respect. And then, uh, as I said, part of our own advisory is that, you see, we are only, as I said from the beginning, uh, most of our businesses are highly saturated locally, but are in high demand internationally. But what we need to do, about the lack of basic knowledge in export, limits our potentials to go or to go beyond our limit or to our full capacity as uh, exporters. So with this brand uh, new money, I'm to start my acquisition. Uh, it's the time where to spend that three months. I hope uh, I was even thinking that it would be excellent for another two months so that we can learn more. Uh, everything about the program is so fantastic. Uh, it's so appreciated and being part. Not only to me as a city, even to my community, my community has felt the impact of this show. My plan for you is in fact, is gaining higher from this uh, trading app. Because I know the number of our customers that are highly impressed, that almost look forward to. Even this morning, I received nothing less than three calls from exporters on so, so many issues or challenges that they have that we are able to address them. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at a very good losing your job for non performance? You desire a change for the better in your career. Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. My name is FY Padamosti. I am a professional banker of over 16 years experience. I've handled clients in various um, industry, vertical and uh, sectors in Nigeria, including manufacturing, logistics, automobile and rest. And when I started off my career, I would say that I, I had more of, um, trade knowledge around trade import because of the type of clients that I handled. But I want to say that the defining moment in my career was when I um, underwent pretty impact um, trade academic training. The first one was in my standing last year space. So fast forward in 2020 when the COVID came, again that thought came to me. And this time I said, no, I'll take um, the move by the hand. I'm not going to wait for my company to train me. So I um, heard about, I, I reached out to 3 t Impacts, and you know, they're always there, always throwing things at your face, supporting you, not necessarily for you to come and spend your money, but just educate us. So I went through the different courses that they had, and I just knew that I had to, you know, go for this one. This is the executive diploma in export business management. And I can tell you, as of 2021, we are at the lockdown, I wonder when this three months training, I can tell you, this has been a game changer for me in my career. I didn't know that non oil that's what to become the focus the way it was, but all I wanted to do was to provide and um, to be able to provide advice to help my clients understand exports. You know, I know the trade is um, the processing side from the bank's perspective, but I didn't really understand the export environment and how it affects clients. What what do the what does an exporter, what are the pain points? So this and um, um, this course helps me in order to have 
good understanding of the export environment in Nigeria, what you should be looking for, what are the needs. It's an all encompassing program. And at that point, when I finished this program, it opened a huge opportunity for me in my workplace. And I can tell you that I was able to make a high impact and providing solutions for exports and um, allowed, which allowed my company to grow in reach some bound in terms of non-oil exports in Nigeria. We are still learning, and I believe that there are more courses for me to take from 3T Index, and I can recommend this program to anyone and everyone. Even if you are not a banker, you're just a regular trade person, there are other, other opportunities coming up in, for trade within Africa, outside Africa, especially with the geopolitical tension. I think we have to equip ourselves with the right knowledge, right skills so that will be able to you know, take advantage of the opportunities that not just for Nigeria, but for Africa. Thank you very much. Trade Index, you're the best. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, everyone. See you next week and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.